I literally want to cry. So if you didn't know, I have a sister and her name's Ashley. And we both have boyfriends. And every night we both fall asleep on the phone with our boyfriends. So one day we're all hanging out and we're like just talking. And my sister's boyfriend looks at me and he's like, you need to stop going into your sister's room in the middle of the night. And I look at him and I'm like, what are you talking about? I don't have a reason to go into her room. Like I, I don't go into her room, especially in the middle of the night. Then my boyfriend hops in the conversation and he's like, no, 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 no. He's like, no, I hear Ashley go into Kayla's room every night and stare at her. So me and my sister both look at each other and we're like, we don't go into each other's rooms, do we? And we agreed that we do not. And they said this has been going on for months. So for months, somebody or something has been going into me and my sister's room for about 15 minutes every night and watching us sleep. Did you guys know that there's some bitches out there that do their makeup just to make a TikTok? They don't even like go anywhere. <laughs> it's me. I'm bitches. Story time about how I cheated on my boyfriend and I did not feel bad at all. Y'all, please tell me if I'm wrong for this. By the way, the story is anonymous. One thing my mom always taught me was to get to the money and think about people's feelings later, if at all. So that was kind of the mindset I had my entire life. So I was dating this guy in college who was about to get drafted into the NFL, and we went to a college party together. But then this one guy walks into the party with him and his friends, and he caught my eye even though I had a boyfriend. So as me and my boyfriend get separated, I go up to him and ask him his name. His name was Cameron. Cameron then tells me he's already drafted and his future is looking bright. Cha-ching! So I wasted no time getting busy with him and honestly, I was kind of trying to trap him. Oh, I'm such a whore. So my boyfriend starts looking for me and someone directs him to where they saw me go. He walks in on me cheating on him with Cameron. He was crying and everything. He was so heartbroken. I wanted to feel bad, but I just didn't. Y'all tell me if I'm a terrible person or not. My sister and I have always been mistaken as twins. I'm 19 and she's 16, but we had the same height, skin tone, and similar voice. She also has a habit of being a copycat, from the way I dress to hobbies, even piercings. I know it's cute if you look at it from the outside, but sometimes it gets annoying. Like, yeah, we are quite close too, but why does she always happen to pick up everything I pick up? One afternoon, I was tidying up some costumes in my college showroom and found a rather cute brown and pink wig. It looks like a mushroom. I put it on, think it looks rather funny, so I snapped a picture and posted it to my Instagram. I received a text from my sister asking if I really cut my hair. I didn't mention it was a wig. While I somewhat have a feeling that she might copy that too, I lied and replied, yes. I came home that weekend and lo and behold, my sister emerged with the same silly brown and pink bob cut, except this one is on her permanent hair. She was surprised that I arrived with my hair still long, then realized that I liked her. She was furious that she had to cut that silly hairstyle because she thought I had it. Our parents think that it's a really bad joke and wanted me to cut my hair too to make it up to her. So am I the asshole for telling my sister I cut my hair when I really didn't? So put a finger down if you were ever paid to go promote a club. So you promoted this club to all of your friends and all your followers on social media. And they all showed up to this bar event. And one of your friends got really, really drunk and pushed the owner of the club, AKA the person who was going to pay you for promoting it and bringing all of the people to the club. And because of this, the owner decided that they weren't going to pay you anymore. So you got really fucking upset. So you drank a shitload of tequila to numb all of your pain and all of your problems. And then your best friend came to pick you up and you were walking to his car with him and you tripped and you ate shit and you broke your ankle and you broke your phone. And then you got inside of the car and every Everyone was laughing at you for crying because they thought you were crying because you were crying because your phone broke instead of breaking your foot. And then you kept being like, my foot hurts. And everyone was like, no, you're just a dumb bitch. Your, your foot's fucking fine. So you go home and you fall asleep drunk and you wake up drunk at 6 a.m. And you need to go to the hospital because your foot actually broke. And then your friend also puked in the back of the car on the ride home. Just me. My cousin in high school recently turned 18. She doesn't have a car and during her birthday weekend thought her parents were going to buy her one. When they didn't, she was pretty upset. I should note that I'm not very close with my cousin or the rest of my extended family for that matter. Anyways, my cousin texted me on the Friday before her birthday asking if she could take my car to the mall and then for an out of town road trip with her friends over the weekend. I tell her no. She begs and pleads with me, but I tell her no again. My car is for me to drive and for me only. If she wants her own car, she can save up and buy one. She calls me a bitch and says that I ruined her birthday and that she's embarrassed because her friends think she got a car for her birthday and she doesn't have one. I don't respond to her and think nothing of it. I wake up on Saturday morning to find that my car has been egg and teepeed. And since the weather was warm outside, the raw egg baked into my car along with the dried up toilet paper destroying the paint. I check my security cameras and I find my cousin and a bunch of her stupid friends vandalizing my car. I obviously press charges and my cousin is in legal trouble. Her and her parents are pissed off at me for pressing charges, saying she's just a kid and she's going through a phase. Saying things like I'm almost 30 and I don't remember what it was like at that age. Do you think I took it too far by pressing charges on her? Never. Make your man delete or block any bitch off of social media. 
here's what you're going to do if you're uncomfortable, which bitch, you fucking should be. You're going to have one conversation, one conversation, eloquently spoken without you ever saying, I would prefer you to delete or block. Never say that. Don't even bring it up. If he goes, grabs his phone, deletes and blocks, gives you a fucking hug and kiss and says, baby, I love you. And those bitches don't matter. You're winning. If he does it and makes a big deal out of it, is hesitant, doesn't delete or block or makes a big fuss about doing it and then does it, he will never look at it as his decision. He will always hold you accountable for that decision. will resent you and then go behind your back, re-follow and unblock that bitch the minute the going gets tough. So be careful how you phrase what you're telling your man. I can't argue with people who don't have sisters because I always take it way too far because I never learned where the line was because when you grow up with sisters, your entire life is spent psychologically torturing each other and then sharing Skittles 10 minutes later like nothing ever happened. After moving to a new city, I met this guy on Tinder. Our relationship was progressing really fast and after a few weeks of dating, I found out I was pregnant. We went to the hospital where they confirmed I was pregnant but very early on. My boyfriend was furious. He said he didn't sign up for this and he knew people who could quote unquote get rid of it. I told him I'm going through with this with or without him. I didn't speak to him for a couple days when he reached out saying he wants to be part of his child's life. He moved in immediately so that we could start saving money. The morning after he moved in, he made breakfast for me. I was extremely nauseous and not in the mood to eat anything. He started yelling at me and saying it's for the baby, I can't be selfish. Less than 24 hours later, I was bleeding uncontrollably. He told me it was nothing and I shouldn't seek help. When the bleeding didn't stop, I went to the hospital where they told me I was no longer pregnant. I had no suspicion he had anything to do with it, so we stayed together. Weeks later, I finally kicked him out because of the abuse he was giving me and my dogs. I found out I was pregnant, and I told my OB the situation, and that's when she told me I most likely didn't miscarry, but was given something to dispel my pregnancy. My daughter is now two, but still live in fear of seeing him in public. Here's something fun. When you're in a long-term relationship, you'll often find yourself doing this thing with your partner, where you'll say, when we have kids, I hope they have this trait of yours. And today my husband was like, I hope our kids will be as resilient and determined as you. When I was 11 years old, I got in a fight with my mum when she was picking me up from school, and I was being so rude that she wanted to teach me a lesson and scare me a little bit, so she said, you can find your own way home. Left me outside of my classroom, got in her car, and drove off. Now, realistically, she was just doing the block and was going to come back and pick me up, hoping that I would be apologetic. Uh, but I wasn't. I was very stubborn and was like, I can find my own way home. And I decided to run home. I, in fact, sprinted from the school grounds and ran into a close family friend who offered to give me a lift, which I accepted and I got home by my own means. Now, my mum did do the block and not only came back to me not being where she left me, but to one of my friends saying, yeah, I saw her get in the car with some weird guy. Imagining my mum's soul leaving her body that day is enough for me to not ever want kids, let alone kids like me. If you're ever driving late at night, don't do what they did. Two boys picked up a girl on the side of the road while they were on their way to a school dance. In the car, she kept saying that she was cold, so one of the boys gave her his jacket. But when the night ended and they were about to drop her off, the girl accidentally left with the jacket. So the boys said that they would just come back the next day to get it. But when they came back and knocked on her door, they discovered something that would make them question what is real and what isn't. An old woman opened the door and asked them who they were looking for. After talking to her for a while, it was revealed that the girl they found on the side of the road was her her daughter but the thing is she had been dead for 12 years she was killed in a car accident at the same street corner they first saw her the old woman pointed to a cemetery down the road and said that's where we buried her the boys didn't believe her at first they'd spent the whole night with this girl so they knew that she had to be real but they went to the cemetery and saw the boy's jacket draped over a gravestone and on the gravestone was the girl's name and the date of her death exactly 12 years ago to the day have you let anyone borrow your phone before? One woman let her son borrow her phone, but she could have never expected the terrifying things she saw after she got her phone back. So this woman got her new phone and she put it on the kitchen counter and went to watch some TV. That's when her son came in and asked if he could borrow the phone to play with it. The woman didn't think much of it at first, so she agreed, but she could have never known that this would lead to a terrifying discovery. When it was nighttime, she got ready to tuck her son into bed. So she went upstairs to his room, but he wasn't there. Then she ran over to her room and saw him sleeping on her bed with the new phone in his hand. She felt relieved, so she took her phone phone back and started looking through it. At first, nothing was out of the ordinary. She saw her background had changed, but it wasn't until she saw the photos that she found the horrifying surprise. There were many new photos on her phone that her son took around the house, the front door, the kitchen, and even photos of her taken from the back when she was watching TV. She started deleting these photos until the last one caught her eye. Instantly, she turned around, terrified. It was a photo of her son sleeping in her bed, but it was taken by someone else, someone standing above him, and on the edge of the photo was half of a stranger's face.